And now, for the week of July 17th, Adobe Photoshop TV is on the air. Welcome to Adobe Photoshop TV from the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And here's your host, the Photoshop guy, Scott Kelby, Dave Cross, and Matt Pluskowski. Hey, welcome everyone to another superficial episode of Adobe Photoshop TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the fine people who bring you Photoshop User Magazine, the greatest magazine in the history of print the page. <laughs> and this week's episode is brought to you by Strata, DLO, CDW, Logitech, and iStockPhoto.com. Hey, we're very, very excited to have, of course, our brand new sponsor. I don't know if you noticed, Strata has joined us, and we are very, very thankful to have them along. Uh, they do the coolest 3D stuff, so go check them out immediately. In fact, stop the show. Stop. <laughs> hit, hit the, the pause stop button. button now. <laughs> go to Strata's site, check it out, download some demos and stuff, and then come back and watch the rest of the show. So we'll wait. Okay, you're back. Hey, <laughs> hey, we've got a uh, we have a show for you. My name is Scott Kelby, and joining me, as always, from the great country of Canada and w surprisingly subtle Canadian uh, plug subtle. here, well, Mr. Dave Cross. Hello, everyone. Welcome again. Good to see you. It is, and even though he can't really <laughs> see you, it's still good for him to say that. Hey, we are here for another show. Of course, you realize Matt Kloskowski is not rocking the house key. He is on the road again this week, and we're covering for him again. Yes. It's very upsetting. It's <laughs> but that's not going to stop us from having a pretty darn mediocre show. So we've got all kinds of stuff for you. Uh, let's see. Hey, we have a special interview today, too. We have a different kind of interview. If you've watched our interviews before, they're usually, uh, they're usually very, very Photoshop-specific. And this is, this is it's, it, it's a very important thing for Photoshop users and especially photographers and retouchers. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye out for that coming up in just a little while. But uh, first, you brought us a tip, but we're not showing yours first. That's correct. We're not. because You brought a cool tip, too. But we're going to do mine first. You know why? Because mine is so bad, it has to be broken into two parts. Because <laughs> I am doing a tutorial called Panos Gone Bad. <laughs> and, and I have to tell you basically with the story about this, this panel, why it's called Panos Gone Bad. Uh, when I was at uh, Adobe Live in Sweden, and this was just a few weeks ago, Dave was, was nice enough to cover, Dave and Matt were covering for me, um, I decided to go shoot a pano. And I shot one single pano, and I did all, so many things right. I... Did, you know, I, I use the manual exposures. I turn you turn off, of course. So there's a couple of little things you do. You turn off auto ex, auto exposure because you don't want you know the exposures to change as you shoot the different chunks of your panel. I turned off uh, uh, auto focus. I turned off uh, auto white balance. I turned off all the things that could create a problem. But the one thing that I forgot to do, and, and there's a it's a key thing, and that is before you shoot your panel, don't get totally plastered. <laughs> No, that's, no, it's going to look like I was totally plastered. No, I did not level the tripod, and it created some chaos. Now, normally, what you'd do is you'd look at these photos that you're going to see here in just a second, and you'd go, well, you just throw them away. But since I only shot one pano, I have no choice. I have to try to save it. So that's what we're going to do in this show. In two different parts, we're going to actually try to save this bad pano. Now, I, when I do part one, which I'm going to do now, and I'm done with it, you're going to go... Whoo, that's got a lot of work, and it'll be interesting to see if I can actually fix it in part two. So here we go. Uh, let's, we'll, start by, we'll start by starting. That's a good place and to that's, start. I love to start there. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, we've got a, um, a folder full of the shots here. And I'm going to open up the first shot to show you that. Uh, see, this is what happens when mm. you don't level your tripod. <laughs> Either that or there was just a, a severe like, architectural problem. No, it, this, this was me. This is the King's Palace in... Um, in Stockholm, Sweden, a beautiful, beautiful place. And, and don't hold the fact that I did not level my tripod against it. It's a fabulous place. Let's open up these. It's seven parts I shot for this pano. Now, I did, you know, the other things, right? I overlapped by 20%, and I was, of course, shooting on a tripod, which, so I was halfway there. And I have a bubble uh, level, but uh, I decided not to use it because <laughs> I thought it would be good to eye it. So here are the seven pieces here. There's seven different chunks here, and you can see each one is more crooked than the next. But because I did overlap them by 20%, Photoshop will be able to put these back together for us, which is great. So you go under the File menu, under Automate, and you're going to choose right here, Photo Merge. Now, once you've got the photos open, Photo Merge brings up this little dialog box right here. 
And it says, do you want to use these open files or do you want to go find a folder of files? Or I could have just opened this first and gone to folder. But since I had the photos open, I wanted you to see and we'll just use open files. Now, see where it says attempt to automatically arrange source photos. I can't imagine why, Dave, you would turn this <laughs> off. Not, nope, no, nope, no, I no. want to do it myself. Because <laughs> I figure if I'm going to do it myself, I won't even use Photoshop. It would be under I the mean, manual menu as opposed yeah, to the automate menu. Right, I wouldn't case. use Photo Merge at all. <laughs> I would actually use... Uh, layer mask to do it. So yes, I, I would leave that on. Attempt to <laughs> automatically arrange the source images. So I'm going to click OK. And again, I have to warn you, although it will probably stitch them together fairly well, it's not going to be a pretty thing. <laughs> so let's step back and then just watch what happens. Oh goodness, what's going on? <laughs> well, this is what you have to watch while it's doing it. And so it's not good to have been drinking right before you do that because the flashing <laughs> lights, you just fall right over. OK, here it's building it. See, it's kind of trying to build it. And there it is. So it actually assembled it fairly well. But you can see there's all kinds of problems. I'm resizing the window here so we can fit it in the screen. There we go. All right. So you can see it actually did a not great job. Let me just zoom out a little. No, it actually didn't do badly. Let me just kind of move it here. Let me just scooch it up a bit so you can see. There we go. But you can see that there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of little thingies that are, you know, it's, well, it's crooked. And there's, there's bad thingies. And you're probably wondering how we're going to fix that. That's what part two is all about. <laughs> so stick around for part two of how Scott fixes the world's worst pano coming up in just a little while. But before we do that, we have some exciting news from Mr. Dave Cross. Mr. Dave Cross, he has a brand new book, not just a new book, though, a kick-butt book <laughs> coming out. Tell us about it, Dave. Well, I'm very happy to show you this book. It's a brand new book, as Scott said, called Photoshop Finishing Touches. And the whole idea behind this book is things you can do once you're finished with your photo, basically in Photoshop, just those, well, finishing touches, edge effects, borders, kind of color, uh, special color effects, things of that nature. But I think one of the things that makes it, that I'm proudest of, is the way that our book team put it together. It's very visually based so that you, when you start off in the table of contents, instead of just showing you the name of the effect, we actually have a picture of it, so you can actually see what it looks like, and then you kind of go, "Oh, that looks pretty cool." Yeah, what it, page is that on? It's you not jump just right a picture, though. It's a really cool picture. <laughs> you know, this little thing is pretty. When yeah, you, when you see it, it, it does. It everybody really, comments about it. Though. Yeah, it really it's is got because the coolest table of because content. basically that well, what was happening is all the techniques were called like apply a filter to a stroke, and I thought, well, that doesn't really tell you very much of anything. So having a picture or edge effect to, number seven, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So I'm very uh, happy about that and the fact that this is the first book I've done where I used entirely my own photography, Yay! except for two photos that were from my daughter and a couple of iStock photos where I needed like a, an old Polaroid or something of that nature. So that was part of my inspiration was to be able to use my own photos. So. Yes, and he's, he's quite of the fashion photographer, Mr. Cross. Start so check beginning. out his brand new book. Now, it's, when is it available? Well, it should be very soon because this is our first sort of advanced copy, but that means it should be out almost any time now. Excellent. Now, Dave, is there anything you want to say to me? Well, let me think now. I'm thinking while we're on the book topic that perhaps there's a book that you might have done that... Uh, yes, there is, Dave. Thank you thank so you. much. I appreciate that. Okay, so, here we go. Okay, yeah, I do. I have a brand new book coming out. <laughs> and here's the weird thing. It is not a Photoshop book. Ooh. Ooh. It is called... It, well, well, before I tell you what it's called, I have to set it down here. Ooh, Ooh, you, you almost... No, no. <laughs> it is a book for digital photographers. And it's called... You ready? Because I've got a bad name for this thing. Ready? It's called The Digital Photography Book. Wow. Whoa. How will they what even know name? what it's about? How will you know what it's about? <laughs> so it's not a Photoshop book. It's something else. <laughs> Let me tell you what the inspiration for this book is. I talk to people all the time, and they tell me that they're frustrated by the photos that they're taking. What they did was they started with a point-and-shoot camera, and then they bought a DSLR. So they bought a, you know, a Canon 20D, a Canon 30D. They bought a... Um, a Nikon D70, something like that. And the problem is, and this is I'm getting straight from them, is that all they're getting is photos that look like they got with their point and shoot, but now they're 8 megapixels. <laughs> and, and, right. and so here's what I did with the book. I wanted to do something completely different because there are a million books on digital photography. Does the world need another book on digital photography? No. So I tried to do something a little different. I take this thing as if that we're out shooting. So Dave and I are out shooting. Now, if Dave and I were out on a shoot together, and Dave would ask me a direct question. Let's say that, that Dave and I are out shooting. We're, we're doing outdoor photography, and there's a flower. And Dave would say to me, I'm still putting words in your mouth. Dave says to me, hey, Scott, I want to shoot that flower, and I want the flower to be in focus, and I want the background to be out of focus. Now, I wouldn't turn to Dave and go, 
Well, Dave, let me explain to you how aperture works, and let me explain to you how the relationship between depth of field, I wouldn't. Here's what I would do in real life. I would go, all right, put on a zoom lens, set your aperture to f2.8, aim at that flower and fire. <laughs> That's what I would really do in real life. I wouldn't give a big explanation to that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this book is. So this book is not for professional photographers. If you're a pro photographer, do not buy this book. It is not or for pros. Or buy it and give it to one of your friends who's not a pro. Give it to your friends that drive you crazy about <laughs> questions. So it is an entire book of just that, of just telling you exactly what to do, exactly what button to push. And it's based on techniques that I would do if I were out there in the field and you say, I want to get, I want to make my sunsets warmer. I want to do this. Or just you're, you're asking me very direct questions, and I'm going to give you a very direct answer without giving you a lesson on photography. Because every book gives you a lesson mm -hmm. on photography. This is on how to take great pictures, on how to all of a sudden take that camera that you bought and get much better looking photographs. That's the deal. And it's based on all kinds of different things. There's all, every chapter is a different set of things. There's a whole chapter on just how to get really, really, really sharp, clear images because there's about 15 tricks and they're all very subtle. It's a lot like typography. It's a lot of little things when you put them together, all of a sudden you get that pro quality. Can't wait. So that's it. <laughs> now it's now it's Dave. <laughs> you can pre-order that at Amazon.com, BNN, BarnesandNoble.com. Love them, and uh, any place that fine books are sold. So now you got a tip. I do have a tip. Woo! Yes, All right, I do. What do you got? I have a tip that basically the the idea is we're just a way to combine photos together. As you can see here, I have a picture of some lightning, and I also have underneath here a picture of just a regular sky, and I want to try and make this sky look a little more dramatic and stormy, etc. So first of all... How will you do that? I don't know. It's going to be impossible to make it look realistic, I'm sure. But first of all, it needs to be more of a dark and stormy night effect, so I've taken my uh, curves palette and just pulled this uh, curve down a bit just because I want to darken things overall to begin with. Now we'll go and get our lightning bolt, and I'll just drag and drop. Notice I don't have to select anything because I'm taking the whole photo just drag and drop it over. I'm going to hold down the shift key though just to make sure it kind of centers it initially so I see where it is. Now I can kind of roughly position it but of course it doesn't look very realistic because there's still too much of the original dark sky. But I deliberately picked this picture because it is very dark. If I double click on it, it opens up this dialog box. It's going to be a bit of a challenge to get it all to see at the same time. But look down at the bottom here, you'll see there are a couple of these little sliders that say this layer and underlying layer. If I take this black triangle, as soon as I move it, you'll see most of the black disappears. However, it looks a little bit jagged around the edges. So if I hold down the Option or Alt key, that lets me split this triangle and just kind of softens the transition. So now I get some lightning that's looking just a little bit better. There may still be the odd bits here and there, like down this bottom here, where you might need to do some either masking or erasing to kind of fix it. But what the main part of what I want to show you here is also to add kind of a rain effect. We're not just getting lightning, mm. we're going to get some rain. So here's a little they technique. They usually come together, don't they? They often do, especially, well, in Florida, not so much. Sometimes it's <laughs> just lightning. Just but a crack of lightning. Middle here's of the day, a, a technique. Daylight. I was actually working on a technique for the magazine uh, and came across sort of this by accident. I thought it was kind of a cool idea when you want to make rain. So here's what you do. I've made a new layer. I'm going to fill that new layer with black and change the blend mode to dissolve. Now, when you change the blend mode to dissolve, nothing happens unless you lower the opacity. And if you lower the opacity way down to something in the, say, 10 to 20 range, you get a whole bunch of black dots. Now I need to add a new layer below, because I, I want to ultimately apply a filter to this, but if you look at my layers palette, you'll see that the layer is still solid black. So I'm going to add a new layer below. I'm holding down the Command or Control key to make a layer below. Then I click back on the top layer and use Merge Down, Command or Control E. That gives me this layer now that actually is all these little black dots. All that remains is to go ahead and do some motion blur. And look at that. We have stormy rain. It just depends what angle you want. Do you want it straight down or on a bit of an angle? Look at that. Something like that. Stormy rain. And then, of course, you can play with opacity and, and blend modes if you want to take it a step further. But just in a couple of quick things, we've taken our nice day and made it look not so nice with a bit of a stormy effect. And that's exactly what people want from their photography. They, they do. I've got they this beautiful photo. What I want to do is make, <laughs> make it, it look, look not bad. Nice. Bad. That's okay. exactly the point. All righty. Well, thank you, Dave. That was actually, even though I was making fun, that's actually a very <laughs> cool tip. Okay. We're back. Actually, we're going to go and take a very, very short break. 
But I want you to come back because we've got some things that are just ludicrous coming up. So stick around. We've got lots more tutorials, tips, and other stuff right here on Adobe Photoshop TV. We'll be right back. Strata 3D CX. Design at a higher power. Add the power of 3D to your Adobe workflow. Link to Photoshop textures. Import Illustrator artwork. Render to layered Photoshop files. Create photo real images. Strata 3D CX. Design at a higher power. Visit strata.com. Alrighty, we are back. I'm Scott Kelby with Dave Cross, and we are here with part two of When Panos Go Bad. <laughs> All right, so let's pick up where we left off on this really, really bad pano. So here we are. You can see it's, well, since the last time you've seen it, it's still bad. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Um, well, 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 there's a couple of problems. Of course, it's crooked, which is, is, is not good at all. And, of course, there's this, the, the, the banding here. Even though I did use a manual exposure and I used, I set a color balance, and all, I mean, I set a, a white balance manually, there's still a little bit of edge problem. Now, we can try advanced blending. To use the advanced blending, what it basically tries to do is blend away those things. You click on the advanced blending uh, checkbox right here. Let me just zoom in so you can see that. There it is, the advanced blending checkbox. Now, here's the thing. This always throws people. I've got an email screen that said, I turned on advanced blending, but I don't see anything. Well, if you notice right below it, there is a button called preview. You actually have to click the preview button. Let me back off there. You have to click the preview button to see the advanced blending. It doesn't just show on its own. Now, I'm going to click preview, and we'll take a look at the preview that we get. And uh, there it is there. And it, it looks somewhat better. Now, one thing that I found out about this is the, the preview that you get sometimes in this dialogue, unless you're viewing it at 100%, it, it usually doesn't look as bad as it seems mm -hmm. like it's going to look in the dialogue box. So I can either exit preview to return to all the other things, or if I just click OK, because I left the checkbox on, it's actually going to apply the advanced blending. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the advanced blending on and go ahead and click OK, and it's going to build the final panorama, which is going to take just a moment. And by now, just a moment... Can I just throw in a tip while oh, you're doing this? Please do. If you're, someone's watching over your shoulder, one of the things that I found is very useful is make your hands move around really quickly like you're doing all the work while this oh. automated command is going because things that are flashing and moving tip. around and they think, wow, this guy's really fast. Wow, there we go. So you can see here's the... <laughs> Thanks, Dave, for... You know, that's that's, that's uh, something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what, but something. <laughs> okay, here's our image. You can see that the pano stitched together pretty well. We've got a couple issues up here, a couple issues over here. There looks like a, an issue right there. Let's go to 100% and see how bad they are. Yeah, there's just really one one bad issue and a couple of storm clouds that have been added. <laughs> so a lot of that's going to go away when we crop this, because remember, I did mess up the, you know, the, <laughs> the angle of it is, is, is pretty harsh. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, we're going to go over here and grab the, no, we're not going to grab that, are we? Right below it. There we go. The measure tool, the measure tool, we're going to use that to straighten this photograph. So I'm going to like maybe click on this fence here, something like this, and just drag it across the image. We're on the top of the fence, so we'll stay kind of on the top of the fence. Something like that. Kind of make sure I'm really right on the top of the fence. All right, so something like that with the measure tool. So you drag around something that's supposed to be straight, go under the image menu, under rotate canvas, and choose arbitrary right there. Which brings up the little arbitrary dialog box. Now, it automatically puts in the correct angle for you. So it knows that, that, that it was crooked because of the measure tool. It types that in there. All you have to do is open rotate canvas and click OK, and it will straighten out the photo. But now you have a new problem. It is a very, very harsh cropping problem. Now, in this case, because we want to make a long, thin pano, cropping is not going to be a problem. We're just going to grab the cropping tool. And let me just kind of zoom out so you can see a little better, even better yet. There we go. I'll knock it down 50%. And we're going to draw out our, our cropping border. So something like that. And I want to get as much of the photo in as I can. So I'll think about right there for the, that part. And I have to tuck this down a little bit to get in there. So you can see I'm going to be cropping out a lot of the problem area right there. So now we have a fairly straight and fairly, fairly much better pano. Now let's go look at some of the problems we have. And you can see they're not nearly as bad as they were before. I can grab the clone stamp tool here and find a nice area over here maybe that's not quite so bad to get rid of this. Looks like kind of almost a little dark rain cloud there. You can either leave it, <laughs> which is the easy way out. Yeah, I'll just leave it. Or you can kind of just clone over it here like that. Just 
option, option click on a Macintosh or all click over here and just kind of paint over that area. Now I'm doing this very quick, quickly. You'll, you'll want to take a little more time than I'm doing, obviously. That's kind of, I'm cheating by going very quickly and doing it this way. So you'll want to take a few extra seconds so you don't get the sloppy job that uh, I'm getting here. And then you're going to want to zoom in that area right there. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. And uh, let me shrink the size of my brush a little bit there. Get rid of some of this really, really obvious stuff. But you can see, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time before you get this thing looking pretty good. And you would, you would probably spend another 10 minutes just touching this up. But we're pretty close here. And there's probably a couple of other things you do. Just a little bit there, too, right there? Mm -hmm. Just a hair. Just a hair. Not too bad. Well, that's not really the worst. But right in there, it looks a little... And you could play with things like the opacity of your clone stamp tool, right? Oh, absolutely. And in like fact, I'm going to do that in just... Well, I'm not going to play with that, but I'm going to play with something like it. Uh, my problem with this now is it could use a little color correction. So um, let's go ahead and do that. And by the way, let me real quick just close these over here. I don't need these other pieces. So let's just get rid of them. I'm just pressing Control-W on, on PC or Command-W on Mac to get rid of them. The other thing I would do is let's go ahead and bring up the, the layers palette. Uh, let's go ahead and first let's do a quick color correction. I mean a real simple one. We'll click the black eyedropper on something that's supposed to be black, maybe one of these windows over here. Something like that. Woo, that's dark. Click on something that's supposed to be white, maybe that cloud or something over there. There we go. And then something that's supposed to be kind of a neutral gray, maybe this wall here. And then let's bring up the mid-tones a bit. Okay, the problem with the color correction, which it does look somewhat better, is that we lost the grass completely. So here's a quick fix for that. Duplicate the layer, change your mode from normal to screen. And then, of course, the grass looks much, much better, but you've blown out everything else. So you're going to hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on PC, and you're going to click right here. And let me just show you where that is, right there. That's for the people watching this on the iPod. They can actually <laughs> see what it was. What was he clicking? There's 12 little tiny buttons there. Clicking the layer mask icon right down there. So we're going to click, option click right there. And so the brighter version of this image is hidden behind that black mask. Now I will go ahead and grab a paintbrush. I'm going to paint in white with a nice large brush and reveal the darker, the, excuse me, let's increase the opacity a bit. Reveal a lighter version of the grass in there and it helps just a little bit to bring out some of that detail. And I accidentally just painted on part of the, the, the castle itself. Is it a castle, would you think? Or? It looks yeah. like a, a palace. A palace, kind. that's the word. Not a castle, it's a palace. Thank you very much. So it's not, the, it's not the king's castle, it's the king's palace. So something like that to get just a little bit closer on the, uh, on the grass. Yeah, there's, you can nice. see the grass much, much better there. And then if, if you wanted to, you see I'm going a little bright in here. Now is when you might lower the opacity up here in the, that's right, up there, whoa, <laughs> coming at you. And the, uh, the lower the opacity of the brush a little bit, and then you can kind of actually lighten up some of these areas just a little bit if you want that are in the shadows. Something like that. Maybe get this tree over here a little bit and this tree over here. I think we about beat this panel to death. Of course, you could work a little bit more on it, but you get the, co the idea. And uh, there's the final panel. Let me shrink it down so you can see the whole thing. It's very long and panoramic, wouldn't you it say? It is very panoramic. All right, so it's not a fabulous, if I had done it right, of course, my life would have been a lot better. But for a, a disaster to start it off with, <laughs> that's not a bad tutorial. It's great every once in a while if you're a Photoshop guy to find a really bad photo. Because <laughs> the first thing that Dave and I think is, Tutorial. Yes. Hey, <laughs> it's a mess. Let's do it on. Let's do it in front of people. <laughs> so there you go. There's a little quick one on uh, fixing when Very panoramas nice. go bad. For those of you who watch the show all the time, of course, you know. We don't take ourselves too seriously, but today I actually have something very, very serious to talk about. I told you we had a very special interview coming up, and the interview is about an organization that's really captured my heart and, and a lot of the guys here at the NAPP, and I wanted to tell you about it. It's called Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. And what Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep does is, is very, very special. They're a nonprofit organization that provides photography to families who have terminally ill children or children that will not leave the hospital. And uh, I have on the line Sandy Putch, who is the co-founder of Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. And uh, she's, it's just an amazing organization. I want to give you a chance to, uh, to hear what they do and see how, how we as Photoshop TV viewers and NAPP members can help. Uh, I have Sandy on the line. Sandy, you there? Uh, yes, Scott. All right, fantastic. Uh, how are you doing, Sandy? Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Oh, no sweat. Now, you're a working photographer. I know I actually caught you. You're out on location shooting today, right? 
Great. Well, so uh, thank you for taking a break out of your schedule. I know how busy you are. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the organization and how it got started? Absolutely. Um, now I Maybe Not to Sleep was actually founded February 10th, 2005, and it actually was started because I received a phone call at the studio with a very um, distraught parent, uh, Mike Packard. He was actually at the hospital, and his son was in a situation that they would be removing him from life support. So his request was that I not only come down and photograph his son with his family, um, but more importantly, his mother was very interested in holding her little boy, and she was not going to have the opportunity to do that due to the uh, monitors and all of the um, paraphernalia that he was attached to. So their special request that they asked when I got to the hospital was that I would actually stay there until Maddox passed away and then be able to take the images of Maddox and his mother alone, skin on skin, um, which is what she really wanted oh. to have. I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Are you still there? Okay, no. Yeah, I'm still there. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I thought we lost the connection. Go on, Sandy. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no problem. Did you get all of that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, of course, you can imagine my shock and, and um, the overwhelming sense of, of fear. That's certainly something that I was not prepared for. Um, I, I knew that this would be a very hard session, but I also knew that there was no way I, I couldn't um, honor her wishes. And so we did, in fact, do the session while Maddox was alive. And then we waited until he passed away, and then we did do a session with Maddox and his mom and dad, um, skin on skin, which is what she had really wanted. And so that's how this, this whole thing got started, from that one incident. Correct. At that point, um, I didn't know Cheryl. I had never met this family before in my life, but um, through a unique, unique set of circumstances, about three weeks later, I was actually called to the hospital for another little boy, Daniel, and... Um, I found it very strange that this was all happening. This little boy was also not going to leave the hospital. And I relayed this information to Cheryl. I explained to her um, through working with her that this was so strange that this was happening and how, how tragic it was that we couldn't offer this to more people. And very true to Cheryl's nature, she's um, absolutely a go-getter, um, we sort of said, what if? I mean, it really started from a simple phrase, what if? And we wondered what it would be what it would be like if we could create an organization that could provide these types of services. And extremely quickly, this, this went up. Um, we created a website. Um, several magazines wrote articles about what we were doing and got the word out. And within the first year, we had just under 600 photographers who are not only volunteers to this organization, but actually working photographers doing these sessions sometimes three and four times a week. Oh, unbelievable. So that, it's incredible work that you're doing. What, what a gift to those families that, that have, have such a, uh, just an just a unbearable loss. Um, how many photographers do you have and retouchers do you have working for now? Well, currently we have just under 700 photographers. We also are represented by six different countries, which has been incredible. These countries are now accepting this work and starting their own affiliated organization. So the growth rate is incredible. But one of our biggest needs is many of us can do the photography, but we get backlogged in the imaging part. Um, I know for myself, we've had situations where we've had up to five babies in one week. Um, we've had five in one day. And so you can imagine that all of this work is volunteer, and okay. all of it's done on our own personal time. Okay. Now, we factored in that each baby takes us approximately 10 hours to complete. That's from the beginning, from the time we get the phone call to the completion and delivery of the images. So at 10 hours a baby times five babies a week on average, um, we're dedicating 50 to 60 hours a week just to get this work done. And that's, again, our own time. Wow. So where we need help is we're looking for image artists, people who can actually do the artwork on the babies and um, get them to perfection, and that they will in turn be able to possibly provide that service for us so that we can continue to do the photography but have assistance with the Photoshop side of it. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, because that's what, I mean, everybody that watches this show is a, is, a, is a Photoshop user. We have, of course, tons of photographers and things. And, and, and that's what I hope to do by bringing Sandy here on the show is to get her some help for this amazing organization and what she's doing. So if you are a retoucher or a photographer and, and you're an image editor and, and you know retouching, Sandy, where can they go to, to, to find out how to help your organization? If they go to Now I 
www.lightmeladydowntosleep.org. Um, they can find all the information. There's a link there that says um, to become a photographer. They can actually fill out that contract, and we can list them on our forum as an image artist, a uh, retouch artist. Uh, the one thing that I did want to make clear is that all of this work is done completely at no charge. Not only do we provide the sessions, but part of the requirement is that we provide all of the images to the family with the artwork done at no charge. So there's no money that exchanges hands whatsoever. Fantastic. Absolutely. What you're doing is just, just incredible. And, uh, and so, guys... And ladies out there, uh, we this is something that if you have a heart for this, I, I know I really do. If you have a heart for this, please stop by their website and check it out. They are desperately in need of retouchers. And uh, and, and I, I think, what Sandy, what you just said, that there's no charge to the families. There's no money changing hands anywhere. This is something you're doing out of your heart. And we strongly encourage uh, NAPP members, of course, and, uh, and uh, Photoshop users around the world to get behind your project. Well, thank you so much. You have no idea how much this means to us. Well, believe me, uh, God bless you for what you're doing, and uh, and uh, I hope that you get the get response. And I, I know a lot of the NAPP members are going to race to your help because we've just got incredible people in this association, and I know that our Photoshop TV viewers are going to feel the same way. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your time, and uh, and again, God bless you for the work that you're doing. It's contest time. It is contest time, and first, as we always do, we have to revisit last week's contest to give you both the question and the answer. And last week, the question was, we showed you a graphic of a dialog box with the name of that dialog box missing, and it was, name that dialog box, and it was, fit image was the dialog box. And the person Ooh, who not trick. only had the correct answer, but was one of the many thousands that answered, and we randomly picked this person's name. Congratulations Aww. to them. And now we have... Strangely enough, again, this week's contest. Another contest. But before we see what the contest question is, what will these fine, fine people win? They will win another just fabulous package of prizes, starting off with our DVD, Best of Photoshop TV, where we've taken the first season one and taken out all everything except the tutorials. And I think set a world record for consecutive tutorials to start with, all right, because I know yeah, a number of us have a habit of doing that. And, a number of us and being me. I, I'm, me, I, I'm right in there with you on that one. So I think I counted 17 in a row that start with all right. So, so all we'll right, win, whenever we'll, we have. We'll win that. And also a copy of the brand new Photoshop earlier, Finishing Touches. Brand new, so new. Loud. I'd be happy to autograph that for the winner. So they will have one of the first copies out of the blocks. And we're also going to give them... A subscription to Layers Magazine, the eleven-year subscription, eleven-year, one-year subscription, no, 11 year. One year, one year subscription. <laughs> a magazine for all things Adobe. So whether you use Photoshop or all parts of the Creative Suite and other Adobe products, you will find it. Yeah. Illustrator, here. Acrobat, right. Flash, Flash all the new, the now. new, yeah, new X Flash Media column, products. Yeah. So that, now Weaver are we going to give them a little Photoshop world thing? Yeah, yeah I think we might. We might. We're also going to throw in a full conference pass for Photoshop World. Now that's coming up September seventh through ninth at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. Woo so, woo! Yeah. Okay, so uh, check that out. Should be a lot of fun. We're going to be, of course, broadcasting live from there as we always do. So, lots of fun. Go check out the Photoshop World Conference. Go to photoshopworld.com. If you register now, by now I mean right now, you save $100. It's an early, early bird registration thing. So. Right. And I think it's worth mentioning that if you are not a NAP member, signing up for Photoshop World your first time gets you a NAP membership. So, that's just part of the deal. It's part of, built and, into the price. And what comes with a Photoshop uh, NAP membership? Photoshop user magazine. So many things, it's hard to, hard to mention. But yes, it comes with that as well. So lots of cool stuff. Now, uh, when, uh, oh no, we have a, we have a what question. Is, what yep. is the question? Well, in, in, once again, this time we're going to show you a dialogue box. Now this one's got a bunch of writing and we basically blurred out a certain portion. So in just case you can't read, I'm going to read it to you. It says, could not use blank because the current canvas size does not match that of the history state. So what you have to do is fill in the blank and tell us what tool name is missing from this warning dialog box. That's easy. <laughs> All right, okay, so where do they send their answers They to? go to photoshoptv.com and look on the side. You'll see a list of links, including enter the contest. Enter Fantastic. once. Enter only and, once. And good luck. And good luck. All right, now between each episode, when we do an episode, we know that from next week to this week, you'll 
you'll have nothing to do. You'll just be sitting there <laughs> sobbing, sobbing, and sobbing. So we, we give you three things every week to do between this week and next week. My first one is this thing, especially for photographers. Now, we mentioned her before. Uh, Lori XL runs a site called EquipmentLady.com. And what she does is she sells your used camera equipment. So if you've got lenses and bodies and accessories that you want to sell, you go there, you fill out a form, tell her what you want. She comes back and gives you what the market value will be, and she sells it for you. And uh, she does all the work, and it is sweet. Excellent. She also sells stuff, too, obviously. But uh, go check it out, EquipmentLady.com. Great. Now, I also have a, a suggestion. And one of our buddies, Eddie Tapp, is starting a great new tour with Monty Zucker, and they'll be out in a whole bunch of cities. It's uh, ZuckerTappTour.com, and you can find information about these two great photographers who will be sharing all of their knowledge on a great tour. Sharing all of their knowledge, which, yeah. which all of it will be empty. Your heads will be empty at the end of the day <laughs> because they'll have given you all of their knowledge at one Swoop. Okay, lastly, I'm going to invite you to go to Knapp's website, and it, for a number of reasons. You keep hearing us talk about Photoshop User Magazine. If you've never seen Photoshop User Magazine, it is a magazine all about Photoshop. Dave Cross writes a column in there, as do I, as does Matt, as does people like Jack Davis and Ben Wilmore and uh, Burt Monroy and, and um, Kevin Ames, a whole bunch Ames, of them. a bunch of people, Jim DiVitale, mm -hmm. uh, and it's just it's a, a magazine just dedicated cover to cover for Photoshop. You get that free as part or included with your, your NAPP membership. And NAPP membership is very, very cheap. It's about eight bucks a month. So if you feel like your Photoshop career is worth eight dollars a month, it's not a bad investment. However, if you feel like your Photoshop career is not worth eight bucks a month, don't join. Find another career. Find another <laughs> career. No. So that's basically the deal, the scoop on now. The reason why I want you to stop by the site is when you go by photoshopuser.com, you will see a little copy of Photoshop User there. Click on it, and you can download a PDF of the entire magazine. It's a sample issue to give you an idea of what's in there. And it's ads and all, so it's, it's not a small download, but it's a smaller download than Photoshop TV. <laughs> so go check out that sample issue. Well, that is it for this week's salacious, scandalous, and somewhat super silliest episode <laughs> of Photoshop TV. On behalf of myself and Mr. Dave Krause. We shall see you next time. Our friend from Canada. Thank you for watching Photoshop TV. Thank you to our sponsors and especially our brand new sponsor, Strata. Go check them out. Make sure you buy several, several copies of everything that they sell. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week right here on Adobe Photoshop TV. Thanks for watching. Adobe Photoshop TV. See you next week.